All right, so welcome to Don't Destroy Your Data Center. <laughs> if you like, take two. All right. I'm Stephen Judd. You may have met me by now. I'm a multi year, multi discipline IT pro. I've done a lot of technology. The only thing I really haven't delved into a lot is data. I'm terrible at data, so please don't come ask me to fix your SQL query. That's not my skill. I am also a PowerShell enth enthusiast, maybe, possibly. Okay. I'm also a dad joke enthusiast. You may have heard that by now. All right, but what you may not have heard is that I'm a fashion icon. No, maybe not. Okay. And I have stickers of my glorious face looking like this on the back, so please grab one. Now, the question is, why should you care about this talk? In other words, why are you here besides to see me, you know, try to make silliness up here? But it's because we're all professionals, aren't we? Question mark. Right? We trust each other, don't we? <laughs> we know what that setting does, right? Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> this is foreshadowing. This is, that's what that's called. All right, so what you don't, uh, that may be nearly impossible to see at the back, so I'm just going to read it. It could be mistakes. It could be that the purpose of your life is only to serve as a warning to others. You do not want people to see this picture and think of you, <laughs> right? I sure don't. All right, I just stole their stuff. There's the QR code, it's on that if you wanna, if you wanna get up. So the scope for our discussion this morning is, we're gonna be talking about Azure DevOps also known as dev.azure.com, and then your site name, or formerly known as https site visualstudio.com. Now, quick show of hands, who has been moving around in Azure DevOps and doing their thing, and then it flipped them back over to stu visualstudio.com unexpectedly? Yeah, every once in a while, one of those sneaky little URLs show up and you're like, wait, where did I just go? You went back into the past when it was called VSTS, a reasonably searchable name before they rebranded it as a normal word, DevOps. So no shade on Microsoft for that one. Azure Portal, we're gonna be talking about the Azure Portal, portal.azure.com. We are not gonna be talking about GitHub, TFS, GitLab, SVN, or whatever crazy thing you're doing in order to manage your code. That, you know, that's out of scope and also AWS, GCP, IBM, Oracle, and whatever other foolishness you uh, may have run into out there. Yeah, we're not talking about that either because you gotta scope your talks. But please don't leave if that is you because the principles in this session will apply to whatever it is you're doing, okay? Also, sorry, there's very little PowerShell in this presentation. I love PowerShell, I want to be, but this is, we're talking about something else today. Business Continuity Disaster Recovery Tripod. So you may be familiar with what I like to term, and this is what do I call the PowerShell Tripod. It's Git Command, Git Help, Git Member. One tells you all the commands you have available to you, Git Command. Git Help will tell you how to use all the commands that you have available to you, and Git Member will tell you the things that your commands return, here's what all you can do with them, and here's what all they have, okay? so. Let's switch that over to what we're talking about today. Protect your data. Well, that seems obvious, but it's not, because some people don't. Don't be that person. Protect your code. And what's the difference between data and code? Because code is data, right? Data is the business information that makes your business valuable and gives you a strategic advantage over your competitors, which is why thieves want to take your data, right? protecting your code, your code is what runs the applications that gets to your data, that also gives you the strategic advantage over your competition. And finally, protect your infrastructure. Well, that one makes sense. That one's obvious, right? Because if you don't have anything to run your code on that gets access to your data, you have no applications. So where to watch? Usually, where to watch? 
That wasn't part of the presentation. I just thought of it. You're welcome, Luke. Thank you. <laughs> Call out for the video for the, for the watchers at home. Anyway, know your users. Like, don't go up and shake the hand. Hey, nice to know you. That kind of know your users. But it's, do you know who's in your systems, right? And beware of overprivileged accounts because there are overprivileged accounts. I can almost guarantee you, unless you're Bjorn over here, that there's overprivileged accounts. Okay, quick shout out, by the way, to Bjorn Sundling's presentation yesterday. If you didn't go to it, then you're gonna wanna catch the video because it's gonna help you with the things I'm talking about today. Azure Global Administrators. Yeah, these guys are powerful and they can mess up your data center super fast, right? Fun fact, some of these global administrators must be accounts that you can't get rid of, right? You can't do, uh, now they may have changed this, Microsoft may have changed some of this, and like I said, Bjorn had some good ideas, just I'm referring you to his session. But these accounts stick around, and you give them to your most trusted administrators, but most trusted administrators, things can happen, all right? Azure DevOps. So the correlation for Azure DevOps to global administrators is the project collection administrators. Now, how many of you have run, let's see if I can get the name right, Defender for Cloud. Oh, I'm gonna mess it up. De Defender for Secure, De what, it's the Defender for something. And it's in Azure and it'll tell you, what it'll actually tell you is how, whether you have too many global administrators. It's part of your security score. And kudos to that team to, to deliver that and to deliver it for free. So do the security score on your Azure uh, environment and your Azure tenant. Guess what doesn't do that? Project collection administrators. So you could have every user in your organization in your project collection administrators, and to my knowledge, I could be wrong, nothing will tell you, hey, that might not be a good idea. All right, so pay attention to that. Know your users. Beware of service accounts. Why service accounts? Now let me be specific about a service account. A service account is not a person, but it is an account that you've provisioned in your environment. And somebody, somewhere, knows the password, okay? Especially shared service accounts. You've given a service account that runs X application to a group of developers, and surprise, that service account has made its way through your organization. And why has it made its way through the organization? Because that service account can do things that you've restricted your users from being able to do. And unbeknownst to you, people are doing things with that account. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to you. So beware of those accounts. Beware external accounts. Now what are external accounts? These are accounts outside of your organization that have been made part of your organization, right? Isn't Active, Azure Active Directory helpful? Well, yes, it is, because now, whoever did the, the B2B connectors from one domain to another, ouch, painful, right? But now, you can just bring them in. Well, how do you know that the account that you've brought in is who it, they say it is? Risky. All right, let's take, we'll, we'll talk some more about that. But what you wanna do, if you have these accounts, you wanna severely restrict restrict these user accounts access to your environment. Because if you don't, you now have a possibly shared account at some other organization, right? Going through your organization, yikes. Take a moment. So you need to secure your Azure Active Directory. It's easy, right? There's not very many options in there. So you, know, you just say, wait, this checkbox says secure my Azure Active Directory. I think I'll check that. Yeah, no, not, not so much. But here's what I'm gonna suggest that you focus on, okay? Focus on global administrators. I talked about that before. I gave the shout out twice, so you only get two. Sorry, my friend. Pay attention to your 2FA slash MFA requirements. If you're not doing that, you're messing up. That's just the way it is today. Yeah, it's inconvenient. So work on the ways to make it convenient and frictionless for your users. Get them used to that. We're moving into an MFA until we get a true passwordless kind of setup, right? But for now, this is what we got. Use it, set it up. If you're not, you're asking for it. 
controversial point. I'm just going to say that now, but because I'm standing up here with a microphone, you get to hear my opinion, and then you can carry your own with you wherever you want to go. Password length over complexity and symbols. Okay. I like a 24 character password length or maybe longer. Yes, it takes a long time to type, but hopefully you're not typing a bunch. However, if I don't have a 16 character mixed something that's something generated that I don't stand a chance of memorizing, I am going to write that down because that makes my life easier. Well, I'm not, I'm not that guy. I'll use my phone to write it down, right? I'll use something. I will use a password manager. I will use a password manager that your security departments are not aware of or have not sanctioned in order to keep my password because my password is stupid and I can't remember it. But if it's a really long alpha, alpha even with numerics, but it's a really long alpha, okay, I, I think I beat that one to death, but that's me, okay? Owner rights. You should focus on owner rights. Now, owner rights is over in the Azure site because we are talking about Azure Active Directory here, right? So when you give someone owner rights of your objects in Azure, they have full control of everything, including modifying the security. Now, yes, you can do policies on it, but remember back at the beginning slides, you know what that setting does, right? Right? There's not too many options in there. You know, again, kudos to Microsoft and their developers because when they see, hey, we need this role and our customers are asking for this role, they build the role. Great. Did you know that role existed? When I started with Azure in 2015, you could look at the list of roles and it was, you know, not you, use your imagination for how big a font this is, but this was the list, right? <laughs> now, I think this arm goes farther than my uh, hamstrings will allow me to, right? It's a big list. Do you know what they all do? I sure don't. It's better to give out contributor rights. If you give out contributor rights, they can do whatever they want to with the object, but not touch the security. Okay? Even better is to limit the access to specific resource groups, because now you're focusing down on what they can actually work with. Now, this is where in your organization, you're going to have what I like to call arguments. You are not going to agree at how to scope your applications, your developers, your administrators, your management. So yes, this is where contention is. And again, I'm just saying, hey, here's what you want to do. And don't go back and go, hey, Steve and Judd told me we should do everything this way. And they go, I don't care who that guy is. <laughs> He's not changing my resource group strategy, right? But this is, I'm just telling you, this is good advice. This is, my, well, I think it's good advice. It's my advice, so it must be good, right? So who's watching who? Uh-huh. Auditing in Azure DevOps. Are you auditing in Azure DevOps? Did you know, by default, when you set one up, there is no auditing? Yeah, some of you did, because you went to the right session. I told you I'm not going to mention you again. So if you went to that session, yeah, you know. It must be backed by Azure Active Directory. So if you have not connected your Azure DevOps instance to Azure Active Directory, you don't get any, you don't get any edits, I mean auditing streams. It just isn't there. And I'm gonna show you that. So see previous slides, if you wanna do active, Azure Active Directory. Hopefully your org already has this set up. Most do, right? Because you have an Azure tenant, it's part of your setup, but whatever. It only keeps 90 days of events in the auditor by default. So how noisy is your Azure Active Directory environment? How quickly do your events turn over? I don't know, they're yours. Go look if you don't know. This may be an issue for your organization, especially if you need your auditing for longer. So can you meet your compliance requirements for your organization if you haven't looked at this and said, oh shoot, we only have 90 days of log and by law, for some organizations, we're required to keep these events for a year. Yikes. Connect to a SIM. Okay, this is where you switch from having Azure DevOps do your logging, and now you're gonna stream it into something else. And this allows for alerting on specific events as well. So when something pops up, because it's being streamed, 
It's going over here and now you can action on it. Be like, oh, someone just made a tragic mistake or we got bad people in there. All right, demo. Oh, we have a question, yes. What is SIM? SIM, I'm gonna screw up the acronym. It's Security and Information Monitoring. Event Monitoring. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right, so this is fun. I didn't click on this ahead of time, so, which I should have done because I wanted to do it this way. All right, so instead of a demo, because I can't demo this, because once you set it up, it's set up. And then I have to tear the whole thing and then try to hopefully do it again live over the wire, and no, we weren't doing that. All right, so here's Azure DevOps, as it is just very first setup, period, okay? Now notice, I'm over here on my Azure DevOps, I demo Stephen Judd settings, Azure Active Directory. You're not a member of any Azure Active Directories. Like, uh, oh, okay, that challenging, but you will be a member because your stuff's set up, but when I set this up, I had nothing. I was like, huh, that's interesting. This is connect your organization to Azure Active Directory. The action will map, et cetera. I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm pointing out the things that I should have, I just talked about. All right, now look over there. This is my demo user. That's what DU stands for over there, okay? All right, so then I said, all right, well, let's go to Azure and make sure I have a person. So I did, yeah, perfect, sweet. So now I got this. Yeah, start free, otherwise money, 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 okay? So then back to Azure, it's like here's my quick, tar quick start. Notice the name has changed now. Now it says default directory. Before it didn't have that. So now I'm actually in the directory. Unfortunately, like I said, I can't just like show you this. Going back to Azure DevOps, now it looks different. Now I can connect to the directory because now I actually have an account. Now, I didn't actually connect them. I just created an Azure Active Directory account for myself. It's weird, but that's how it works. All right, so now I'm gonna connect. So we're gonna drop down over here on this arrow and we're gonna go to the default directory. Are you guys impressed with my little paint skills here yet? <laughs> yes, I blurred out my tenant ID. I know you people. Actually, I don't know you people. That was on slide one, right? I can trust you, right? So you pick your directory, you hit connect, and now... Oh, no! All right, you hackers. <laughs> And it's on the video too, I'm ruined. I'm gonna have to destroy this tenant because someone else is definitely going to. All right, well. <sighs> What's this talk about? I, did, I totally forgot what this talk was about. All right, so your organization is now successfully connected and you and all your users may sign out now because it doesn't know that you've connected. Yeah, okay. Most of this stuff you're not gonna have to do, but now I'm connected, everything's there. There's my stupid tenant ID again. <laughs> God, grief. But now you can go over here to these settings and then notice on the, the on, I'm gonna point with my pointer here. Over here in security policies, I now have log audit events. This is now, this wasn't there before, but now that I've connected them, this now shows up. And by default, off. Don't let that be you, turn that on. Okay, all right, it's now on. And now that it's on, they start showing up. That's it, easy. That's all free part of Azure DevOps. Turn that on, all right? So then you wanna go over here into your auditing and turn on the streams, okay? And that's where this goes back to the slides. Any questions on any of that? I know it's a little uh, uh, ephemeral because it's, it, I didn't actually go through it, but I, I'm hoping you get the idea, okay? Any questions? No, okay, good. Because I didn't want to answer them anyway. Branch policies. <laughs> branch policies. Lock down your main branch. Whatever branch you call that, lock that sucker down. Because you need to know 
who can change the policies as well as locking down your branch policies. That is so important because what branch policies, what good is your branch policy gonna do you if you don't know who's changing them? Once you've turned on the auditing and especially when you stream it into your event, then you can catch whenever people change your policies. And that's what you want. You want to catch when people are doing bad things. And who can merge into main? You don't want people just rando merging into main, right? You want to be able to go in there. Oops, I don't want to go that guy. You don't want to go in there and say, you know, anyone can merge the main. You say, the person who wrote the code cannot merge. You want this many approvers, right? These are all, this is like the normal things you would do. But let me ask you this. Do you know that of all of your code repos, all of that is on? Might need to look into that if you don't. All right, now this is not the time or place for a branching strategy holy war because people have very strongly held opinions about branching. There isn't a best branching strategy. I'm just telling you, there, <laughs> there isn't a best branching strategy. There might have been an opinion that showed up on the slides. What matters is that you're in control of how and when the code is merged. That's what matters, right? You got to know. Okay, so quick demo. It's the same silly demo of screenshots. But you know what? Screenshots have never failed me. Come on, you guys are supposed to laugh at that. I showed you my tenant ID. I'm already toast. I'm going to have to destroy the whole thing. All right, so this one's obviously very short. Oops, I missed. There we go. Wait, that's the wrong one. So <laughs> it's never failed me unless I screw up. Connect just go, connect authentication. No, that was, what was I going to show you on this demo? This is what happens when I don't have my notes. What matters in branch policies? Oh yeah, branch policies. <laughs> oh, there went the hope of this thing being neat. All right, I'm gonna have to zoom, aren't I? There we go. All right, Summit 2023. Go to repos. In your repos, you have your branches. This is just quick, hello, go, yes. Which repo am I in here? 2023? Oh, maybe I went to the wrong one. Oh, good grief, this is where where I wonder, what have I done to myself? All right, back to home. Yes. Oh, it's the static web app. Ah, I went to the wrong one. Apologies. Yeah, here we go. Got some stuff in here, yeah. The fun part about you not being part of an organization that uses Azure DevOps and talking about Azure DevOps is I have to build everything myself. And then it's like, oh, where did I put that? Okay, so here we go. We've got some branches and whatever, but we got main. And this is what you're looking for over here. You got the lock, and then you got a branch policy. Okay, so let's take a look at the branch policy right quick. I have mine set to require a minimum number of reviewers. Okay, does it have the, the work items or comment resolution? These are the things that uh, if you're an administrator, you're going to get into arm wrestling competitions with your developers of, hey, you're slowing me down, man. Don't, don't get in the way of my code, man. That's not cool, man. I'm not assuming your developers are all from California and surfer dudes, <laughs> right? But the one you want to pay attention to here is allow requesters to approve their own changes. Now, this is my demo for obviously I don't have that checked because I'm also the only user in the organization. It's like an army of one except I'm still trying to be all I can be. So you do want to turn this on when it's appropriate, right? Okay, um, again, branching and policies, that's things you're gonna to have to work out, but I want you to pay attention to that. There, the odd thing about it is the lock and the policy. So if you don't lock your branch, then anyone can merge straight into it, but you still have a policy applied. That's not very helpful. So you wanna lock it and have a branch policy, all right. I forgot that demo was live. So let's see if I can get back here and do this. All right, protecting the infrastructure. 
So we talked about protecting the code. Now let's talk a little bit about protecting the infrastructure. You wanna lock your Azure resources. <laughs> That's easy, right? Lock on, yeah, except some solutions will not allow you to lock resources. Looking at you, Commvault. It hasn't been a while since I looked at them, but I, they got my evil eye, right? Why does Commvault do that? Well, they're backing up your, your IaaS solutions, right? Because they're attaching to your disk, making copies, everything's cool, right? Except when they make a copy, they need to be able to stop and create another one and they do things with it that says if you lock your your drive you lock your object so that people can't do things with it like i don't know delete yeah the app doesn't work so test 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 owner and user access administrator built-in roles can create and delete management locks who in your organization has these roles again back to Who's doing what and who can do what? All right, we're gonna come to this. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. But here's, here's an article, you know, search for that. By the way, slides will be available so you can just click through. But protect your Azure resources with a lock. And audit changes to those resource locks. Again, you gotta know who's doing what and pay attention to that. All right. Evaluate your Azure DevOps and Azure connections. All right, so what does that mean? Your connections from Azure DevOps can be set up in four different ways. And so that now we're gonna connect Azure DevOps to Azure so that your code can flow and do all the things. You have authentication. Here are the various authentication ways, or authentication methods. Service principle automatic, service principle manual, and managed identity, and published profile. All right, I've done the first two. The third one got a little sketchy because we didn't like it, so stay away from that one. Published profile, I've never even understood it. I don't know what it does. It's a mess. Stay out of there, right? Pay attention to that one. Now, Microsoft does, and I guess, let's see, do I have demo? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was the demo that I was going to show them, whatever. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. So here you go. This. Let me zoom. Please work. <laughs> recommended. Why is this recommended? Because they cycle the passwords. You don't know them. It sets it up for you. It won't time out like the manual ones. And then all your crap breaks and you don't know why. Like, hey, we can't push our code. We had a deadline. Yikes. Okay, watch out for that. So use the recommended one. And then, ha ha, red arrow. Now that was a really long demo. Back to the slides. Oop, let me get that zoomer out of here. I love the Windows built-in zoom. Thank you very much for whoever wrote that code. Evaluate your Azure DevOps and Azure connections. Continued. All right, your connection destination has three scopes. So you've decided who's gonna do this connection. Now you need to say, where is it gonna go? All right, so there's a scope level. You have subscription, management group, and machine learning workspace. What is that? Oh shoot, what is that? Let's zoom and see. Zoom in, zoom in, <laughs> zoom in. <laughs> Okay, what is that one all about? All right, let's 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 take a look. That's where the danger lies. All right, I told you there's gonna be foreshadowing. Overbroad destination access can allow for unaccounted for access. All right, demo. I think it's this demo, connection scope. Yep, here we go. All right, problem with doing it this way as you guys can see. Oh, he's got this many to go through. All right, so now we're gonna make the connection and we're gonna connect my Azure DevOps into Azure. All right, so here's the subscription. There's my stupid tenant ID again. Dang it, I did not do that very well. Resource group, service connection name, and then the description. All right, so we're gonna pay attention to this one and we're gonna connect it to what? The subscription, yeah, good idea. And then uh, grant access to all security, or grant permission to all pipelines, right? So I want every pipeline I have in my organization to be able to use this connection that I'm then gonna to connect to my subscription and I have left off resource group, I've just connected it to the subscription. 
coming to my tenant here at the subscription level. That was the hidden option. All right, so now what I've done is I've just given whatever that managed service account, that managed identity, access at my subscription tenant, and I didn't constrain it to a resource group, so it can do anything, anywhere. That was the hidden option. Don't do that. When you're building a connection, and these connections, they're just down here in your, your projects anyway. So you go to service connections and you create one. Create one for every one of your products. Surfer developer comes in and goes, you're slowing me down again, man. And so you say, hit the turf, buddy. We don't care, because I'm not gonna risk my organization for your convenience. This one's dangerous, watch out for that. Okay, I think, yep, that's all of that. That's the one you gotta watch out for, that hidden option. If you have those already set up in your organization by accident, because you didn't know, by the way, a few years ago that you couldn't constrain yours to resource groups. You could only tie them to subscriptions. Yikes. So that may still be in your organization and you didn't know it, even though time has moved along and they gave you the other options. All right, so role playing, here's your scene. A connection has been made to Azure from your team project in Azure DevOps. Sweet, what all does that mean? Okay, well someone made a connection to Azure from a team project. Where are the places in your organization, I mean in your auditing and in your, your trips and monitors and alerts and everywhere where you find out about that? So you should be getting your event streams from Azure DevOps, but you should also be getting your streams of security from Azure. Unfortunately, that's a super complicated thing and there's no chance of me for demoing that for you because your organization's SIM is not my organization's SIM. And you need to talk to your security people if you have them. If it's you, talk to yourself, but don't do it in public because then people, <laughs> you know, whatever. All right, so a website's been set up using a CICD pipeline. Have you done the branch policies? Do you have a branch policies? Um, a branching strategy is what I mean to say. Have you locked it down? Do you know who can push? Do you know how your merging works? Those are the things you need to know about, okay? How about a change in the rights to the pipeline? So someone goes in and makes a change. Do you know about that, okay? Kind of starting to sound like a theme here a change in the pipeline. So someone comes in and injects a new step into your pipeline. And that new step into the pipeline is just pure PowerShell. And that pure PowerShell is bad PowerShell. It says, go find all the VM disks and delete them. Because a hacker got into your organization and you didn't know it. All right, so now, because you might not have locked your disks, or you might not have constrained your organization to your resource groups, or you may not have separated them out by subscriptions, someone with way too much access just did horrible things in your data center. Change in the code. Are they able to put code in that you didn't know about, that was not authorized, that a person or a team of people are not held account in order to approve said code? Now we know people get in a hurry and be like, hey, hey, I, I just pushed something, it's gotta hurry. Oh, okay, yeah, I approved it. Did you read it? If you didn't read it, in your organization and in most organizations, not only is the person who wrote it responsible for it, but the person who approved it is extra responsible for it. It's their career on the line. If it's your career on the line, don't do that. Read the code. Hey, I need this quick, too bad. You should have constrained your push to much smaller commits so that I could get through it in less than a five hour stint of reading all your crazy code. And I see a couple of heads nodding because you may have seen this, right? Now, the challenges with those are it's organizational problems, not technical problems. It's people problems, not scripting problems, right? All right, so let me give you some recommendations. Recommendations A, because I couldn't get them all on one slide, so A. Split out your Azure environments. You may need more than one subscription to connect in with your tenant, right? To me, it makes sense to have a staging environment or an IAC environment where the developers are, remember where I said constrain your connections for uh, at the resource group? 
yeah, that's perfect for prod. It may even be good for dev because you need to do it. But in staging, they may be standing up and tearing down, standing up and tearing down, standing up and tearing down environments. So in that environment, it makes sense to put it at the subscription so that they can create whatever they want and then they can destroy whatever they want and no one cares because we already know that no one got upset about testing and staging. For those of you that were paying attention, right? All right, better to lock down your prod environment and then have less to watch. So pay attention to that. Uh, it also allows for greater rights to developers to allow them to create. That's why I just explained that. Have an environment where they have more rights. Stream your audit events. If you're not doing that, please do that. You need to know what's happening and you need to be able to go back through, okay? Um, oh, the other thing I wanna say on that is you wanna set up triggers and alerts for specific actions that are dangerous. I talked about them, a couple of them. But the, the main thing is, is that the, what's in Azure DevOps is good and I like it, but it's a little hard to use. It's definitely not Splunk, it's definitely not Event Grid, and those tools are designed for it, so use them. Recommendations B, because I told you, it wouldn't fit on one slide, or it would, but it's you know, too small. Evaluate the roles in Azure DevOps and in Azure. Know who has the ability to do what. You need to know that, okay? And you need to know when someone is granted ability. So if there's been a privilege escalation, you should have alarms going off especially if you didn't expect it, especially if it's on service accounts or managed identities that aren't people, right? You should know about these things ahead of time so that they're planned and whatever. And then just communicate. Work with your security identity and developer teams because you're gonna need to. And again, you're gonna have to find the right balance. Every organization has, we're, gonna, we're willing to take on a little bit more risk so that we can get more done. Okay, that's great. But then you, you're running the risk. So other organization is any amount of risk is so great and the damn sure organization is so high, we're gonna lock this thing tight like a submarine that can go deep and not leak. That's our organization. Maybe you work at the Navy, I don't know. There isn't a perfect solution, sorry to say. Hopefully this isn't the first time you've heard that statement, but you need to find the one that works for you, okay? So recommendations A and B together, because some people like to take pictures of slides, so I put them together. So it's A plus B, you see? Yeah, you, you knew what you were getting into. All right. Um, yeah, I'll give you a chance to get that. Give me a chance to get a sip. All right. That, oh, I didn't have an in conclusion. So that's my in conclusion. Here are the recommendations, okay? And I will gladly take any questions at this time. Uh, after this slide, you, did you get it? Yeah, oh yeah, okay, you're waiting for the next slide. All right, good, very good. So this is how you can stay in touch with me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still on Twitter because that's where I built my community and I'm just not ready to give it up yet. Uh, LinkedIn, that's my professional uh, connections. Uh, PowerShell Bridge, that's kind of where I hang out. Um, Discord, that's my Discord, so if you message me, be sure you tell me who you are because who knows what the numbers and the names mean in Discord. It's great for that, but I don't know what any of that junk means. Uh, hit me up on ICQ, 340-799. Yeah, for those of you old enough to know what ICQ is, look how low my number is. That's why it's still on the slides because that's a little bit of a flex there. Uh, my blog is terrible. No, what I mean to say is my blog looks terrible. We've already discovered that I don't even know the URL to my blog earlier this, this week is hilarious. I went to, I went to stephenjill.com slash blog and it showed a, do you wanna buy this domain? And I'm like, no, I have already paid for it. What have I done? <laughs> Oops, so uh, I need DNS help as well as CSS help apparently. But my content is good. I promise you, you'll learn something from that. Um, so take a look at that. And then I put all my code up on GitHub under my name. Thank you very much for attending. I'd gladly take any questions.